Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Mystic Indigo with us. She has been listening to Leak Project now for quite some time, and she reached out to us just a short while ago and said, I essentially, you know, I hear you talk a lot about people with RH negative blood, and there's a lot of questions about that. I'm a nurse, I have RH negative blood, and I'm gonna share some information with you. So I said, this is wonderful, and now I have a great opportunity to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us here at The Leak Project. How are you doing? Great, I just wanted to resolve some, some of the conversation that seems to plague me no matter what I'm doing online. <laughs> it's fascinating how that works. It seems like if somebody doesn't know about something, oftentimes they come up to the most crazy conclusions and, and speculations. But at the same time, there is a lot of information out there that is, in my opinion, quite accurate from the people that I know. As far as the electronics that seem to act very odd around certain people with RH negative blood. Now, I don't know if that has to do with the copper factor in the blood or the frequency, but there's definitely something to it. And you were telling me something about that before we got started. Yes. Um, I've made believers out of the most scientific-minded people that I've ever known. And I myself uh, majored in two sciences when I was young and you know you you if you live it then it's the truth and uh, so it the first experience I had with that was uh, when I was pretty young my grandmother had given me a gold watch and she was really proud of it and quite upset that I wasn't wearing it every single time I saw her and she wanted to know why and I said because honestly it doesn't run and she said I I'll bet that lot. made her mad it yeah she she said I bought it from a jewelry store it's not junk what do you mean it doesn't run um, because you know if things weren't at least a nine on a ten point scale my grandmother was just she couldn't relate to that she was like well we have to fix it so I went to a jeweler with the watch and he said look uh, I've heard that there are people that stop watches I do not believe it I've never seen it I've been a jeweler for a long time I've tinkered with it put it on your wrist walk around the store come back in 20 minutes I did he said okay come back in an hour now I handed him the watch I left I came back in an hour and he said you know what I never thought I'd say this but now I'm a believer because there's absolutely nothing wrong with this watch. What did your grandma so, say to that? She said it was the most ridiculous thing she'd ever heard. <laughs> so even your grandma, after he made that statement, she, she ain't buying it. No, not that grandmother. <laughs> That's My too other bad. grandmother... She, she might have given it a little more consideration, but, um, yeah, that grandmother wasn't going to have any of that. So tell us more about yeah. yourself and, and who you are as a person. Um, I, I guess I'm an artist of different kinds. I, I write, and uh, I've been writing since I was 13. And uh, I write and I paint, I draw, I sew, I do needlework. Um, I'm an energy healer, I'm a registered nurse, um, I'm retired, and um, that's all I can think of. Sure, that's absolutely. About. I put you on the spot right there. Now, so yeah. that, <laughs> that experience you had... The, was that your first experience that really confirmed to you? I mean, walk us back to the first thing you can think of off the top of your head that was a really cool experience like that. Or not just unique, I should say. I don't know. You know, um, I don't want to frighten anyone. But um, as a child, my sister and I managed to levitate one of the neighborhood kids. 
Okay. Now, now that's going to definitely cause some people to say, wait, eh, wait a second. How did that happen? We were playing a game. You know, the uh, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Have you ever heard of that game? Yes. Yes. Well, we were extraordinarily successful at it. And uh, so it seemed that from time to time we could stir up the neighborhood. Um, I was a very excellent poker player when I was in second grade. And um, the neighborhood moms complained because their kids were losing all their allowance to me. And so I was banned from poker. Um, I've had some weird experiences, but to be honest, I didn't really uh, get the, the full scope of it until, I guess, well, I was getting little, little hints and tastes of it, but I didn't, I couldn't really wrap my head around it. Now, when I was 14, my dad bought a house. He bought an old house and my stepsister and I were alone one afternoon and I said, um, I was walking up and down the stairs over and over and she said, what exactly are you doing? And I said, uh, one of these stairs has something hidden in it. And she said, what are you talking about? All these stairs are perfectly secure. She tried a few of them and they were secure. And I said, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But just give me time. And I found actually a, an Indian style a bracelet hidden in one of the stairs. So there sometimes it's just a sense of knowing and you can't really explain how you know, you just know you know. So it's 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 more of uh, a feeling. Um, I've had a lot of strange experiences, and I really didn't. You know, when you grow up that way, you kind of have a sense that maybe your family's a little bit different, but you don't know why. Um, now, my mother was telekinetic and psychic, and so, um, which got me in trouble a lot. And uh, so, I knew that she had talent, uh, and she always said, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. It frightens people. So, I... I found that, you know, to a degree, that really is true. Um, what else? <laughs> so you, when you um, are around electronics, does it still happen quite a bit then? I mean, just things start to fizz out and stuff like that, act twitchy? Yes. If my energy is elevated, uh, if I'm... Um, very rushed it'll happen more if I'm um, very sad or if I'm extremely happy and an extreme of energy creates the disruption for example um, I used to have a boyfriend that used to say look don't get upset I just put light bulbs in everywhere, okay, because I can burn them out. I go through more light bulbs than anyone I know. Um, I can mess up remote controls, computers, watches, smartphones, um, Pretty much anything with a battery. I can drain batteries. I can drain brand new batteries. If you take a camera with me and you let me hold it, you better have a spare battery. <laughs> so does so, that happen to your phone regularly then? Your smartphone or what do you use? Well, at the moment, 
I lo- I've lost my smartphone, but I went for many months without a phone at all because I just couldn't handle the aggravation. So I have a Skype number. <laughs> okay. You don't like to radiate your brain and have a, a trans receiver essentially that projects mass amounts of energy right next to your ear for it to right. basically microwave your brain. I don't blame right. you. Even if, yeah. Even if I have a phone, you know, I, I do the speaker thing. So, yeah, I'm pretty against that. Now, my daughter, one of my daughters, uh, she can put out street lights. And that began to happen with her at about age 14. Um, all, all my offspring are, well, the ones that are uh, RH negative, they are very um, intuitive. Uh, if we're going somewhere together and we don't check with everyone what everyone's wearing I promise we're either going to show up in almost exactly the same outfit or it'll be the same colors so yeah. that's that's interesting now how, how many kids do you have five and how many of them have RH negative blood four wow okay yeah. and the fifth does um is, does does the fifth have the same type of um mindset that you all do or is it do uh, you notice a lot She's, of differences well i should say um she she seems to have some traits that if they're rh negative she shouldn't have but what Studies are showing now that people are uh, looking into it and actually making statistics and things. Someone who picked up an RH uh, positive factor from the other parent can have a RH negative, um, you know, as a recessive gene. If both parents have RH negative or RH negative as a recessive gene, then, you know, they have a 50-50 chance uh, of having RH positive. But they're, they're showing now that if they, if they have an RH negative um, recessive trait, they can still show the traits of um, an RH negative person, someone who's overtly RH negative. So it's very interesting. Now, one thing also interesting is they have a specific shot for pregnant women to take so their bodies don't essentially attack the baby. And... There's, I've, I know people that have kids that have been affected by the shots. And what is your position on that? Did you have to get one of those shots every time you had a kid? Yes, I did. Um, I did. And uh, with the fifth child, she is the RH positive of the bunch. And uh, the the pregnancy did go differently. They were um, doing sonograms weekly for the last two months. Um, and, uh, you know, that's it. If my mother had, oh gosh, probably five miscarriages, um, my father was RH positive uh so yes you you develop if you become pregnant with an rh positive fetus after delivery or miscarriage or abortion the the blood of the fetus a little bit of it through the placenta can leak over into the mother's system 
and the RH negative blood will uh, see this as a foreign body and attack it like an illness. And uh, this can cause, you know, uh, a pregnancy to be lost. It can cause a baby to have a blood exchange, you know, when they're born. And my sister actually had a blood exchange when she was born. She is uh, O positive. So um, I guess she had some problems with that. And it's called antibody D. So, yeah, that is that is a, an issue, a real concern for RH negative mothers. And, and did those shots affect your physical health? Not at all. I never knew the difference if I'd had it or not. Mm -mm. That's great. Yeah, that's great. And so have you gone through paranormal experiences in your life? Have you ever been abducted or had an encounter with an ET that you feel or maybe my labs type stuff? Oh my God. Why'd you ask me this? Um, a lot of people well, with RH negative blood have. So at least people that yeah, tend to really. be around well, um, leak project and some people that I know. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I've, I've had some strange experiences now um, just being the daughter of my mom, uh, could account for a lot of that because she was not your average person, but yeah. Was she military or I, government? She was a civilian employee, um, on an air force base where she met my dad. And, and what did your dad do? Uh, he was a, I don't know what he was doing at the time. He was only in the Air Force a short time, or so he claims. You, my dad is the man of mystery, but um, he was always doing some kind of counseling. Uh, he did work as a teacher for the Bureau of Indian Affairs for a while, but uh, mostly it was psychology type stuff. Okay, so he was doing psychology stuff, and tell tell me more about some of the maybe paranormal experiences you had, and then I'd like to ask you if you remember going through. So you lived on a military base, or did you live on a Native American, uh, you know, land? Uh, for a short time, I did. I uh, my parents got divorced, but I did live on an Indian reservation with my family for a uh, little under a year um, and uh, nothing that unusual happened there but um, so you're, you're Native American and that's not actually true um, <laughs> my mother's mother was born in Ten Sleep, Wyoming and uh, I believe that she's of Cheyenne descent um, I'm not sure, but combing through photos, I was trying to do um, maternal lineage for one of my daughters, and I happened to cross a, a picture uh, of an Indian elder, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, good grief. I I look more like that guy than anyone in my family, you know. Right. <laughs> so we never know. Um, yeah, where to begin? The first time um, I did a meditation, I was motivated. I said, well, I'm in the city, but I want to do a vision quest. So I'm just going to sit here on the porch and I'm going to meditate all day. And... Uh, I did have a vision and I was 14 uh, at the time and if anybody wants to guess what the vision means that would be great because I haven't figured it out yet I have some theories but I'm not sure I was seated on the side of a mountain looking down on a river and uh, 
I saw an eagle flying over the water and the eagle kind of did a nose dive like a bird would after a fish and but when it came up out of the water it was covered in molten silver and as it was flying away the silver kind of melted off of the bird and that was it I've had paranormal experiences and um, I've got one kid that doesn't want to talk about those things I have one kid that I don't know if she's ever experienced any of those things and I well I have two of those and then I have two that absolutely have um, it seems that with increasing age these things are increasing now I'll backtrack a bit for to address something that you said now I had an experience that was really weird and I won't go into all the details of it but <clears throat> suffice it to say that I had a, a, a couple of days where I was feeling out of sorts um, I was it, you know how sometimes you just feel just mad at the world upset with the world and it's just little things are bugging you and getting under your skin so it was one of these days now I didn't feel like I fit in anymore um, I didn't know really what country I wanted to live in anymore I just I just was trying to work some things out and usually I'll go for long walks when that happens all right I was being treated at the time for back pain but in the in in the midst of this I went in for a little checkup and I was getting epidurals frequently and uh, I I don't know how this happened okay I was sleeping late because my back was keeping me up to the wee hours I was sleeping late and there was banging on my door just banging like someone was on fire and I opened the door and I'm in my house coat and I'm like what do you want I'm not even awake who are you and it's a home health nurse just busting in the door I'm like do you often walk into people's living room can I make you breakfast what's going on and he says we have to see how your oxygen is your oxygen's low the doctor's worried and I said and he knows this how I've been in the bed asleep so is he psychic you know what I mean so then I, I had to go in to see the doctor that day and I was asked if I had missing time I didn't know what it meant I just couldn't wrap my head around what in the world they were talking about I said missing time well yeah I was awakened in the middle of some really good sleep so you know but but then I realized I didn't remember all of the day before <laughs> so and I never have so did you end up telling that him that huh did did you end up telling him that that you didn't remember the day before the doctor yes, I told you did there, yes I, I said there is a large block of time that I do not recall but you know I didn't think anything of it I just thought it was the medication maybe uh, or exhaustion or stupidity or old age I don't know what what did he say to that though when you said you did have lost time did he look weird or did he yes. look oh yeah okay he did. he did he he looked very weird um, and he just got really quiet and I could I could feel the weird you know how sometimes that the energy is just you know what the energy is and it's thick like you could cut it with a knife oh yeah that's what it that's what it was like well so did you ask him did you say why do you ask doc why did you knock no. on my door and snap me out of sleep no no 
because, uh, and I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> I have, I have been, um, let me put it this way. How do I put this? I have been interesting to a few people who are in some kind of, like, there's a few of them that I know were FBI. Um, and I think, you know, when you get online and you hear that the government's really interested in people who can do certain things, you don't want somebody to show up at your door and say, pack a bag, you're employed. And take you off somewhere where you don't know where you're going and you have no say so. Um, but yeah, the sometimes you 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 just know things and uh, now with my with my kids, you know, they they also have had experiences. You asked about the uh, I hope I answered it about the UFOs and stuff. I do watch them. I have seen them, but also I I can. I can see orbs sometimes with my naked eye, and one of my daughters also can. My third daughter, she can, and uh, we have had experiences where we're we're going out to uh, photograph where we know there's a lot of orbs that show up in photos, only to see them with our naked eye when the flash goes off. So. That's interesting. I had one, I, I have sometimes weird experiences that happen where I'm awakened in the night. Um, where I, I live in a high crime city. And one night, not too many months ago, I, I heard my name loud and clear. It was so clear that I sat straight up in the bed and I looked toward the wall to see who it was that was calling my name, waking me up. Of course, no one was there. So I looked to the window and there's a prowler with a flashlight at that very moment in time. Just happened to uh, wake up and, you know, hear my name. And here's a prowler going past my window with a flashlight. So, weird things like that do happen. And uh, one time, uh, one of my daughters moved into a new apartment and she had two bathrooms and she was so excited about moving because she had two bathrooms, you know. Right. And she said, um, let me know when you get out of the shower so I can go to the bathroom. And I said, isn't that why you got this apartment? I'm pretty sure you have a bathroom off your bedroom. So what's up with that? And she said, no, there's there's a spirit in there. Now, up to this point, she'd, she'd always made fun of me about that kind of thing. She said, nope, there's a spirit in there. And I said, did you see it? Or why are you concerned? You can't let a spirit keep you out of your own room. And she said, well... Uh, it's a spirit of a young a girl, and, and I won't tell you exactly what is going on with her or how she passed, because I don't want you to get upset, but I'm not going in there. And I said, oh, this is so ridiculous. So I went in the room, and I said, look, you know, there's hundreds of apartments here. You're frightening my daughter. Out you go. And that was the end of it. Immediately, my daughter was fine and and went in the room. Another time, uh, I guess it's been about two years, a little more than two years ago, I was rent, renting a house with the third daughter. And uh, that whole house came alive. We couldn't even get company in the afternoon anymore. 
it was it started with uh, I was hearing someone I was hearing a man an old man complaining about um, the swimming pool my neighbor had a pool and uh, so I thought it was the neighbor and I thought why does he complain at 7 a.m. and I would look out the window and he was just nowhere and I thought well he must be on his phone it wasn't him because I was keeping an eye on him it wasn't him come to find out the uncle of the landlord died in the house and constantly complained about the swimming pool next door. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, that was crazy. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it didn't sound faint or like it was in my own head or any of that stuff. It, you know, I thought it was the neighbor. So, that was weird. Yep. And I don't know, as far as the copper level in the blood, um, all I can say is that I've had certain pieces of jewelry that were real jewelry that started to turn copper color on me, especially rings. But I've had a lot of jewelry do this. So I don't know what that's about. And have any of your kids ever told you about an ET experience that they might have had or any abduction experiences? Well, I only have one that would probably share that with me. But I have one that... Um, I will I will just say the clearance the clearance for the military was special. So whether that offspring had any of those experiences he would not be able to discuss it. So I don't know, I don't know about that one. Okay. You know it's interesting because I talked to some people that have the RH negative blood and they have Native American and oftentimes Irish bloodlines. And they're, they seem to be the ones that are most prone to uh, extraterrestrial experiences, encounters with paranormal. I know some people that even have like shadow people that follow them around sometimes that their friends see as well. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, so that's why I'm doing yeah. my best to connect any dots there. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, you so that's why I'm just, dots. yeah, so I'm just trying to, you know, I'm connecting dots, so when yeah. I have a chance to talk to people that have the same blood type and different experiences as well, right. you know, that's why I ask these questions. So, what else could you tell us about um, maybe some experiences that you have or, or things that you feel would be pertinent towards the questions that people have about this specific blood type? Um, first of all, yes, I, am, I have... Um, a grandmother who is part Indian. Uh, her mother married a, a Scotsman, but I believe he was born in America. Um, and let's see. Somewhere else I've got, well, on her side of the family, her dad so her dad, uh, his family was moved over from Scotland, but they were from Ireland. And um, that family just stayed in Ireland for 400 years. And then before they migrated to America, they married Irish brides and came home. And uh, the family actually began their business with the Cherokee uh, in the Carolinas. And, uh, so yeah, I do think it's pertinent because there's a lot of parallels, I think, in the belief systems. Um, my great grandfather was a, a preacher, but he, there were things that he would do and not do that 
some people in the family thought he was superstitious, and some believe the way that, that he believes. Um, I think that people with RH negative blood, the most important thing that I learned was that we tend to be empathic. And this is so important because once you know that, you can understand why you felt perfectly fine 30 minutes ago and then suddenly you're in a certain mood or you feel something physically that you hadn't been feeling because you're picking it up from someone else. Now, I can, um, I can read energy uh, with, with my hands and, and I can heal. Um, just not myself. I don't know why. But uh, if you know that you're an empath, and then you can wrap your head around that and you can say, okay, well, I don't need to figure that out because I know that it's not me. And the way that you know it is it's, it's such a fast and overwhelming shift. That's how you know. Um, and once you figure that out, I believe that's when the, the psychic skills really, really increase. I know that um, my third daughter, she, she had very little encouragement before she started seeing real results. Now, I'm telekinetic. And this can be very, it can be very hilarious, but it can also be very frustrating. And I often, I often alarm shoppers in the grocery store. Um, because things that shouldn't be flying off shelves do, uh, especially if I'm thinking about purchasing that or even sometimes if I'm not thinking about it just walking by things will just catapult and it, and it really shakes people up and you know my response is you know look around that happened to me a couple of times when I was working in the operating room and uh <laughs> it happened in the same week it was no nope, that it happened three times in two days and the anesthesiologist was all excited asking the surgeon if he saw what had happened and everything and i just clamped my mask down even tighter and i just looked down and did my paperwork because you don't want to draw attention to yourself on the job like that and, Pete, and there are a lot of people that are superstitious and frightened of this kind of thing. I have no control over it as a rule. And when I do try to, you know, play games, I can spin balls and I can, if something's hanging, I can make it swing. But it's tedious and boring. So, I guess it's more fun to get hit with rice and salami and fruit scales and things <laughs> when you say they catapult like get into details on that i mean describe a picture okay. that somebody was walking behind you and they saw it happen or something and when was the last time okay. that happened last week <laughs> at the grocery store mm -hmm. <laughs> uh i was shopping with my sister and I was telling her that um, I that I wanted some sausage but I wasn't going to eat pig and so I was looking for a special turkey sausage and this link of spicy beef on a shelf I had not touched it was on the beef shelf and it literally sailed off of 
the shelf and hit me in the stomach. <laughs> of course, I thought it was hilarious. And I turned to look to make sure, you know, no one was upset. Um, and no one saw it but her. And, and uh, you know, the people that hang out with me have gotten used to it. So they don't react anymore. I can see why that wouldn't be good in a, a surgeon, you know, surgery situation, though. The the scalpel flying across the room, and <laughs> that's not too, too good oh, of an idea. Man, that never occurred to me. Well, I, I sent... Uh, an IV bag sailing um, and <clears throat> the same day I, I I know it was me because of all the other experiences you know and there was a sterile towel on top of the anesthesia machine there's not a lot of wind in the operating room yeah, <laughs> and I can towel, imagine the towel just went plop and landed right in front of the anesthesiologist's feet. And he so, said, where'd that come from, you know? Do you ever just want to get a camera and see if you can move something on camera? Like right now, I want to ask you, like, show us, do something. <laughs> move something. Give us give us a glimpse of what it's like when you're walking down oh, the grocery store. don't. 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 You, I might shut this whole thing down by accident. No, it's not. It's not that easy. And that's that's one thing that's really frustrating because, you know, I might be able to to use it, you know, to help someone sometime. I don't know how, but, you know, uh, but, it, you know, I, I can move things that are lightweight, like, a, you know, those those balls that have the joints in them and you can push them down or you can expand them and there's all the space they're multicolored do you know what i'm talking about? they look like plastic sticks and they have little joints between okay. them and you can squish it or you can open it it's kind of it's almost like a puzzle but they're real lightweight and um i can hang something like that um and anything else I really haven't tried that much, but, you know, a, a thousand cc bag of IV fluid is, you know, fairly heavy. The heaviest thing I've ever moved was a pumpkin scale in the fruit section. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I don't even know how heavy those are, but I'm sure they're not light. I, Seem pretty heavy duty. One lady the whole thing, and she just had no words. She just turn around and walked away just walk away just walk away but uh you know i mean if if you want me to perform something like that you know i've never tried something like that with a non-family member because the reason i say that is because of the you know you feel like you're under pressure and if I get under pressure, things can get crazy. But now one time we were talking to a friend of the family, and he, he said the same thing. And I was saying the same thing to him. I can't just, I don't know, I levitated a piece of notebook paper uh, with uh, my ex-husband witnessing it and it really really scared him and which i thought was extremely comical um i'll tell you though it, i mean if you want me to practice like sometimes i can put a candle out um Oh, no, that's fine. I, I was just thinking out loud, like, it sure would be neat to see something like that because if like, somebody sees yeah. that happen, well, then they'll be like, well, hey, maybe I can do it. Then maybe they can because seeing is believing, and you get 100 people to do something, then you've got that 100 monkey syndrome, uh, and, and I think that's pretty cool. So, yeah, just, just thinking about it, no big deal. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, let me ask you, too, before 
we close out tonight because I think this is all this is all just fascinating you know fascinating <laughs> stuff. What are a couple things that you would like to share with the audience before um, before we close out? I mean, because this is great. I would say that I I believe that there is a a reason for the the different um, RH factor that we may never know. But I do believe that the skills, whether regardless of your RH factor, but certainly the, the probability of you achieving it goes up statistically from what studies do show. I would say that uh, you need to hone it and because you might be able to help people. I, I, I can remote view. Um, and uh, I do sometimes get psychic impressions and you can read people, but I would say don't doubt your ability. If you walk past someone in a public place, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, that person has really good energy, and you have no reason to think it. You've been given no verbal input. You don't know who they are. You haven't heard anything they're saying to the person they're with or anything. Strictly a feeling is just that you know or that you sense it. Trust that because you're probably in the upper 90th percentile, I would say, uh, being correct, absolutely correct. And I trust my gut instinct, and now my kids do too, because if we're out driving or something like that, I can say, look, don't take that route, or that car is going to be in a wreck today. Um, so it, it can be very helpful. Don't take that flight. Take the next one. Things like that. Right. You right know, trust your and, gut. Trust your instinct. Right. Right. And if you do, if you do, the ability will grow. It'll absolutely grow. Telekinesis is extremely annoying. Um, I did have somebody ask me that one time, and I said, you know, I, I've never you know, tried it. Uh, I've only recently been, you know, successful in moving things with my will. And, it, it, you know, I mean, if I could, I would just drop the cover right off the doorbell. And as soon as I said that, the cover fell off the doorbell and into the poor guy's lap. So, and I have no idea why or how. I know why, but not how. <laughs> So it's a weird existence, but don't let anyone tell you that you have the blood of devils and all that stuff. Yeah, it's pretty silly. That really is. Well, you I'll know, tell you, th this is um, this is much appreciated, Mystic. I'm really glad you came on the show, carved time out of your day. Thank you for you know listening to Leak Project and reaching out to me. And love it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to do it again sometime. Maybe I can move something by my will by by that time, but most of the time I can. It's really tedious. <laughs> I can so, I can imagine absolutely. Like, move, 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 move. <laughs> yes, and then when you fail, it's just oh, you know, I don't do failure very well. I, so, I hear you. I can move light things, but you know, I I don't try to do these things unless I meditate. I meditate, I sage my place, you know, I, I, I get my area clear and all that good stuff. It, it heightens the, the energy. Right, yeah, meditation can be really good for you, absolutely. I think that people can take even just 10 minutes a day to kind of clear their mind and focus on something or focus on nothing at all. That's, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I have one thing. That I would like to share. Yeah. Uh, recently, have you ever heard of Corey Good? I have. Well, he's he said something that 
Risa, I was so shocked because I have seen these blue spheres. I, I saw them um, twice. And the first one, I had a friend with me. This, this one was pretty big, but it crossed the hood of the car at night while we were driving out in the country. And I just had a feeling that it was an angel. I said it was an angel. It lit up the whole inside of the car like a bolt of lightning. And um, the friend, she said, yeah, I think that was an angel. And then the next night, I saw smaller ones uh, floating in a tree. Just thought I'd throw that in. You wanted something weird. So there you go. That's pretty <laughs> weird. Yeah, that, that is pretty weird. I've I haven't heard yeah. enough about them. I thought that they were supposed to be like planet-sized beings or something like that. You know, I mean, I thought so too, but but then um, I heard that they can expand or shrink their energy, and I'm wondering if they can meld their energies together to make these larger light balls. I don't know. It's just you know, it's a thought. Sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. And Something I, unique. Sometimes I look in people's eyes and I can tell if they're really a, an evil person. Um, and I can sometimes I'll see like a, a flash of a scene. Um, I can tell you if they're uh, haunted by war sometimes or um, extremely sad or extremely good um or something just something about where they're at in their spiritual growth because i can see things i i don't know like a like a scene that's a pretty neat so, quality to have <laughs> to be able yeah. to see stuff like that absolutely yeah my kids have learned don't lie to me <laughs> nice Human lie detector. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Help me machine. Well, this was uh, much appreciated. Thank you so much, You're Mystic. I appreciate you coming on, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. check out leakproject.com. And also, if you want to know more about these upcoming podcasts, they're going to be exclusive material on Leak Project. So make sure to subscribe, leakproject.com, also youtube.com slash clandestine timelord. Be the change you want to see. I like that. So tell us more about yeah. yourself and, and who you are as a person. Um, I, I guess I'm an artist of different kinds. I, I write, and uh, I've been writing since I was 13, and uh, I write and I paint, I draw, I sew, I do needlework, um, I'm an energy healer, I'm a registered nurse, um, I'm retired, and um, that's all I can think of. Sure, That's absolutely. Enough. I put you on the spot right there. Now, so yeah. that <laughs> that experience you had, the, was that your first experience that really confirmed to you? I mean, walk us back to the first thing you can think of off the top of your head that was a really cool experience like that. Not just unique, I should say. I don't know. You know, um, I don't want to frighten anyone, but... Um, as a child, because, you know, if things weren't at least a nine on a ten point scale, my grandmother was just, she couldn't relate to that. She was like, well, we have to fix it. So I went to a jeweler with the watch and he said, look, uh, I've heard that there are people that stop watches. I do not believe it. I've never seen it. I've been a jeweler for a long time. I've tinkered with it, put it on your wrist, walk around the store, come back in 20 minutes. I did. He said, okay, come back in an hour now. I handed him the watch. I left. I came back in an hour and he said, you know what? 
I never thought I'd say this, but now I'm a believer because there's absolutely nothing wrong with this watch. What did your grandma so, say to that? She said it was the most ridiculous thing she'd ever heard. <laughs> so even your grandma, after he made that statement, she, she ain't buying it. No, not that grandmother. <laughs> That's My too bad. My other grandmother, she, she might have given it a little more consideration, but um, yeah, that grandmother wasn't going to have any of that. Found certain people with RH negative blood. Now, I don't know if that has to do with the copper factor in the blood or the frequency, but there's definitely something to it. And you were telling me something about that before we got started. Yes. Um, I've made believers out of the most scientific minded people that I've ever known. And I myself uh, majored in two sciences when I was young and you know you you if you live it then it's the truth and uh, so it the first experience I had with that was uh, when I was pretty young my grandmother had given me a gold watch and she was really proud of it and quite upset that I wasn't wearing it every single time I saw her and she wanted to know why. And I said, because honestly, it doesn't run. And she said, I paid I'll bet a that lot. made her mad. It, yeah, she, she said, I bought it from a jewelry store. It's not junk. What do you mean it doesn't run? Um, because my sister and I managed to levitate one of the neighborhood kids. <laughs> okay. Now... Now that's going to definitely cause some people to say, wait, eh, wait a second. How did that happen? We were playing a game. You know, the uh, light is a feather, stiff as a board. Have you ever heard of that game? Yes. Yes. Well, we were extraordinarily successful at it. And uh, so it seemed that from time to time we could stir up the neighborhood Um I was a very excellent poker player when I was in second grade. And um, the neighborhood moms complained because their kids were losing all their allowance to me. And so I was banned from poker. Um, I've had some weird experiences, but to be honest, I didn't really uh, get the, the full scope of it until... I guess, well, I was getting little little hints and tastes of it, but I didn't, I couldn't. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Mystic Indigo with us. She has been listening to Leak Project now for quite some time, and she reached out to us just a short while ago and said, I essentially, you know, I hear you talk a lot about people with RH negative blood and there's a lot of questions about that. I'm a nurse, I have RH negative blood and I'm gonna share some information with you. So I said, this is wonderful. And now I have a great opportunity to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us here at The Leak Project. How are you doing? Great, I just wanted to resolve some, some of the conversation that seems to plague me no matter what I'm doing online. <laughs> it's fascinating how that works. It seems like if somebody doesn't know about something, oftentimes they come up to the most crazy conclusions and, and speculations. But at the same time, there is a lot of information out there that is, in my opinion, quite accurate from the people that I know. As far as the electronics that seem to act very odd around